we are we're gathered here today because we feel we must and also because we've uh, not only lost Lauren Lawson this morning but also we've had a string of saints of the church and saints of Eureka College lost just in the last few weeks. Lynette Sherman, Sharon Altman, Flo Kaufman, and of course, uh, Doc Traster is in serious condition and non-responsive. Um, but welcome here and I appreciate everyone coming, especially the Logstons who are here. Um, Lauren was 84 years old was a class of 58 here at Eureka College, professor of English for 54 years, both here and University of Illinois Western? Western. And uh, he was a coach, too. I did not know that until today. Coach of tennis, is that right? Or cross country? And I knew he, could, he was a multi-talented person and smart as anybody and has forgotten more than I will ever learn. And I know that he has many, many loved ones, both family and friends and community members. His wife Mary is here. Uh, his son Bruce is here. Um, has daughters Beth and Lori. Um, of course, the family is in the middle of making arrangements. This is not, of course, in lieu of funeral arrangements that will be announced, I'm sure, in the next few days. But he had eight grandchildren, too, and Bryce is one of them. He's a student here at Eureka. Well, this is, this is the hardest kind of loss. Because they are much because he's much loved. And we're going to have a moment here where people can tell stories that they would like to tell about Lauren. And I'm sure there will be some who will tell stories of how he made them feel. Um, and I'll... And that's the way that we honor his memory, is that we not only share those qualities in what we say, but we share those qualities in honor of his memory with one another. We live those qualities. And that's how we honor his memory. And I know that there's a banner on campus with his, his face on it. And as we walk under that banner, I like to think that he will be not only in a banner form watching over us but watching over us and all that we do here in spirit after I lost my mother I came to realize that she didn't feel like she was gone like I thought it would feel I felt like she now knew her knowledge was perfect and that she knew all the things that I couldn't tell her even though I should have, perhaps. <laughs> she, in essence, now had perfect knowledge and perfect love in perfection on the other side of heaven. So, to help you get started, I want to tell a story <laughs> about Lauren. Um, Lauren called me Padre, which <laughs> I loved. I loved it dearly when he would call me Padre. No one else did. I'm, and I'm kind of glad because it was his thing with me. No one had ever done that to me. No one had ever called me Padre. And he said it with such, such a smile on his face. Every time he said it to me, he would say, Hi, Padre, with that big, Lauren smile. He would come down the hallway. He must have been parking in the back, or else he was making a special trip down the hall 
to say hello to me. And that's usually all that it was. He would say, hello, Padre. And then he would duck back out again. And I'd run into him a lot where the post office box is. I would hear his voice. And another thing he did one time is we, we, we shared... We shared a love for Ray Bradbury. He, he, he understood it, of course, a lot better than I did, uh, the science fiction author. And I, he, science fiction of Ray Bradbury turned me on to the love of reading. Um, and so we talked Bradbury. Um, and he, but he gave me a book, and I was hoping it was going to be a, a Bradbury book that I'd never seen before. It would be just like him. And, but he gave me this book, and if any of you, if he's done this to you, I want to know because I could not understand this book. Not because it was deep. It was a complete mystery to me. It's as if someone had written a story from the point of view of an alien, non-human person about an experience and did not know English grammar. Just knew words. And then all the words for each page were just kind of tossed up in the air and they landed back in the, in the book. I was completely at a loss. What does this mean? I mean, I thought after a while, after, you know, several pages, dozens and dozens of paper, pages, I would see some kind of, ah, he's playing a trick on me. It's a puzzle book. And I'm supposed to read like the first line or the first word in each line. No. Or maybe a skip a line, skip a line, or skip a word and read. No. Maybe I'll just read the letters down one side of the page and then back up the... No. And I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was so embarrassed because I had to give him his book back. And I had no idea what I just tried to read. And I know he was going to ask me about it. And I thought, surely this is his time. He's going to tease me. Nope. He looked at me. And I said, here's your book back, Lauren. Uh, and he said, with that professorial excitement in his eyes, so what would you think? And I said, Lauren, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea what this book is about. I have no idea what it's saying. And he kind of furrowed his brow. Hmm. No judgment. <laughs> he just took his book and left. And I never talked to him about it again because I, I was too ashamed to ask him, what does this mean, Lauren? Tell me, please. But he, I never did. So hopefully I'm going to figure this out. This is going to be my next challenge in honor of his memory is I'm going to figure that book out. So I know there are people here who have stories they would like to tell. Um, so who would like to come up? Please don't be shy. I knew Mike would have a story. <laughs> Mary, it's a sad day. I had the opportunity to to room with uh, Lauren Loxton up in the little office suite that I had, had for many years, and he would have the smallest office on campus. It was itsy bitsy, but in that little itsy bitsy office sat a man who was kind, and in a world that is in constant turmoil. Kindness is the greatest gift that you can possibly have and the greatest gift that you can give to other people. Lauren Loxton was brilliant. In his mind, he created a university. And in that university, daily, something would change. And if you asked him, what's happening at Heliothrope University today, Lauren, he would tell you that the basketball team won and some guy with some wacky name <laughs> scored 20 points. And the next day, he would have somebody else 
do that. And in his, in his mind, he created this special universe. And every time in alumni and development we put a, a picture of Lauren Loxman, we would get a thousand likes. 500 likes, a thousand. And today, if you go on social media, if you go on Facebook, you will hear testimonies from his students telling you that he was the best teacher they ever had. And those that are educators will tell you in their post that he was the man who made them the educators they are today. A lot of people always ask, what is your legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? Lauren Logston had no problem with that. He had no problem with that because his legacy was the resume of the students that he taught. And those students are all across the country making a difference in the lives of their students. That's the legacy of Lauren Logston. A quick story, many people might not know, but Lauren and I, we were a part of a music group, The Imposters. And what many people don't know is that at, on the campus of Eureka College, President Wright has outlawed me from singing. She has told me in no uncertain terms, I am not to sing at anything. But Lauren, Lauren, for whatever reason, liked to sing with me. So there are many videos that Lauren and I made of the imposter singing songs that he would tell me I had to sing. I didn't know the words, so basically I just followed along and I had a good time. Because the other part of Lauren Logston is he liked to have a good time. Lauren Logston was the greatest son of Eureka College. The greatest son. At a school where there have been so many great sons, he is the greatest for this one itsy bitsy world. He was the kindest. So God bless Lauren Logston. God bless Eureka College. And God bless all of you. Are you taking more stories? Yes, hopefully. So the last time I stood in front of college academia with a podium was 1986 when I graduated from another school that the color is a little bit different red and they closed it this year and I spoke and Mr. Rogers was our guest speaker so I got to meet him. I'm a little rusty. So I just wanted to say thank you for being out here and I just feel like my dad would want me to have a little courage to address the people here. So I really don't know where this is going. But if I were going to start it off like his speeches that are on YouTube, and in the past, before he was gone, obviously, yesterday, over the years, I would, when I got bored, I'd be grading papers, I'd turn on YouTube and listen to my dad's speeches. Just because, I, maybe I didn't listen to him when I was a kid growing up, but it was just, it was, I was very uh, intrigued by it. But he would start out his speeches by thanking Everybody, Eureka, the administration, Mr. Murtoff, you follow it. it. It's giving thanks to everybody else, taking the light off of him because he didn't want it. He was my favorite aw shucks guy that wasn't an aw shucks, but he, he, he wanted to be the common guy. And his nickname to some people and his email was Old Field Hand because he grew up in a little town in Brown County, had no running water until he was in junior high and he took his first shower and was late for class because it was the only shower he'd ever taken in his life. So the old field hand really fit. Um, I want to say that every, in the last 30 years, at least close to that since they moved back to Eureka from Macomb, where I grew up, was born in Peoria and my first few years are here in Eureka, so I got some roots. Very little though. Um, you couldn't go without an hour, two hours, without Eureka being brought up in his conversations with someone, okay? Whether it was a former student, whether it was what he's doing, whether it's what what's going on on campus, it was always Eureka College. And I think that's in his blood and his veins. I swear that if, I don't know if you call his maroon or crimson, but that's probably his blood color because of, of being here so much. 
and um, my mom being here with them and supporting. But I think as we go through this, when he left us yesterday, he left us comfortably and was was tired of fighting. And you could tell he'd lived a good life. He always told my sister will say he always talked about how great his life is. And when you're his own kid, you kind of forget about that. Um, Another thing is, you guys talk about how great a teacher is. Well, I'm in my 34th year of teacher, and the last 25 have been English. If that's the tree, my apple's on the other side of it. There's no no doubt about that when it comes to the teaching. My senior composition, Coach Wilde might have known her, her name was Ms. Randolph, a phenomenal teacher at Macomb High School. She read my first composition, and she said, Bruce, I understand who your parents are. I understand who your sisters are, but we'll get you through this writing. Okay? So... Through that process, my dad helping some, but really forcing me to learn to teach writing to kids and stuff, I've, I've enjoyed a career of teaching. I wish that I could influence like, like he has. And uh, I'm rambling now, but just know that he's with you. And until this college is non-existent, he's going to be on campus with you every day, be around, all that. So anyway, thank you. Appreciate it. Please. So I met Lauren 22 years ago when I started working at the college. It was at our staff Christmas luncheon. They put on skits at the time, and this year it was Dr. Seuss. And all of a sudden, the Grinch comes hopping in, goes up and steals a Christmas tree and all the presidents and presents and leaves. Well, it was Lauren. So if you can imagine that big smile of his when he got his heart back, it was just amazing. But I've had 22 wonderful years with him. We always joked about how Mary and Lauren adopted me as their daughter, and I would call them mom and dad. Um, he would come in and do his Im impersonations. John Wayne, the Menards man, Chop suey, um, but they all sounded the same. <laughs> but it was just, it was just Lauren. And there was a time where he would come in when he was teaching, and he would give me a, um, a vocabulary word to help broaden my vocabulary and all that. And I had him posted on my desk and all this. But I had him one time for um, a class, and it was the four. Something about the four elements of the dysfunction of television, how it's ruining our lives. And I told Lauren, because the students in the classroom, besides myself, were, um, we were taking a quiz, but they couldn't do it. So he said, he stopped and he said, okay, let's do this together. And they all did it, remember, and C's never the answer. And he stopped and took the quiz with the class and that. And I told him later, I said, Lauren, you're too easy. And he goes, but I don't want to see anyone fail. I want to be here to help them. And that's what he did with me. He helped me go on and get my degree here at the college, and um, I'll miss him every day. Mary, God bless you. I want to, um, I'm his middle child, and I have his smile. You can't see it, but. It goes from here to here. I want to kind of go off what Mike Murtaugh said about my dad. Not only did he create his own universe, but he created a universe for every single person that they knew. Every one of my children, every one of my friends, every one of my grandchildren feel like they are the center of his universe. My dad loved Eureka College. He grew up in a home without electricity, without running water. And he told me the last time I was here in January that Eureka College saved his life. I said, how did you know you wanted to go to college? He said, I, I didn't know that, but I knew that I didn't want to live the life that my parents had lived. And Eureka College gave him that. Um, I, I did not attend Eureka College. I 
I applied, but I didn't get the size of scholarship he thought I should get. So <laughs> he, he decided that he was no longer a Eureka College fan. And um, when he told me he was coming back here, I said, Dad, don't you remember? Don't you remember you weren't going to, you know, you weren't going to support Eureka anymore? Cause, and um, he just, he just laughed. I mean, I, I knew that was not really, that was not really going to happen. Um, but our father loved Eureka College. And, and he loved our mother fiercely. And we always knew that. There was not a time that we weren't, that I was with him, that he didn't tell me how much he loved our mother and how much he loved this college and how much he loved um, being with the students on this campus. And believe me, we feel your prayers. We feel supported in your prayers and your love. And up until the very last moment, my dad was worried about other people and how they were feeling, my mother's comfort, the nurses who were taking care of him. And I just want to thank Eureka College for taking a, a man out of a situation that, I mean, he, he didn't even ever ride on an airplane until I think 1992. And then he was petrified. I'm grateful that, that Bryce can be here and feel my dad's presence here. Bryce is what kept my dad going here. Thank you all for your love and support. I feel him here. And I'm grateful to Eureka College for everything that it's done for my family. I don't have many stories about Dr. Augustine, but I've heard a lot. And from listening to everybody tell their stories today, I just want to say that Bryce is like a brother to me. I mean, a big brother since I'm younger than he is. <laughs> but um, uh, his love for this college, I've heard so many stories even before I attended here, because my mom went here and she told me so many stories about him that she heard. But I remember writing to him at least once, and he uh, he asked me, he's like, "Are you a part of basketball? Because I uh, I help out with the basketball team a little bit." And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "So you know Bryce?" I was like, "Yes, I do." And he uh, he told me. He told me that when he's not gonna, when he's not going to be here, whenever that is, to continue watching over Bryce. And I mean, I'm going to. <laughs> I mean, his love for this college is like my love because I have so much school spirit that I can't really show it as much <laughs> as he as he did. But he did leave a legacy here. No one's going to forget who the, who Dr. Logson was or anything because I still hear stories from my professors. I hear them from my freshman seminar last year from Jason Zerman. He told me so many of them. <laughs> so even sometimes I would just sit with Jason and talk about Dr. Logson just to get to know him more since I didn't get to know him as much as other people did. He left his mark on this campus. And me as a student future educator and learning about what he did for this college and what he did for educators now makes it even more of a special connection even though I didn't get to know him. Because I remember one time Jason told me something because I don't remember what we were talking about. But Jason was talking to me about Dr. Logsdon when I fir the first few weeks here last last fall. And what Jason wanted me to remember was that even if I don't get to know him, I can still have a connection because of, yeah, I'm going to be an educator. I love this college, not as much as he does, but I still love it as much as I love my high school because 
I left my I left my mark at my college at my high school. Sorry, and in some sort of way, I'm gonna leave my mark here when I graduate in like two years. <laughs> but um, I will continue to watch over Bryce, and I will continue to want to know more stories about Dr. Watson so I can get to know him more and have more connection with him. Well, first of all, from the men's basketball program, Bryce, and, and uh, to your family, our deepest sympathy. Um, but I, I'm going to take a little bit of a Eureka College break because I'm from Macomb. I'm from Macomb High School. I graduated. I have two degrees from Western Illinois. And you guys should know how much appreci appreciated he was in Macomb, Illinois, and at Western Illinois. So obviously our campus is deeply saddened, but he has left his mark. I know Sherry Rich is shaking her head at what another Western grad. Brian Moore's a Western grad. Like he left his mark wherever this man went. It wasn't a Eureka College thing, and I know that we're talking about that, but you know, when I was in junior high, um, Coach Logston, I call him now, but Bruce Logston was on the varsity basketball team, so he was like one of my heroes. So I can throw out names like Kyle Porter and the Harding boys. I, I can throw those people out. And, and my sister went to high school with him. So Lauren Longston, in a way, was brought into my life in the early 80s. Um, I just didn't know it at the time. But boy, when you come to Eureka College, you know it for sure. And I'm glad that God put him back in my life. It's been great to get to know his family as an adult. But if I just, if I think about it, and I'm looking at his son play when I'm in junior high. And then as a 50, 51 year old coach, I'm walking off the floor and Dr. Dr. Logston is there to greet you and talk about turnovers and rebounding. <laughs> I mean, it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. You know, I was watching his son in high school, one of my heroes as far as when you're a junior high player to the high school player. And now, you know, as a, as a grown coach, he's talking to me about basketball it was awesome he's awesome uh the only other thing that i would say and, and ken baxter can help me with this one but we talk about student athletes at eureka college when we have the hall of fame you you have somebody that that does your little speech for the hall of fame the induction or whatever whatever it is the the person that does your speech and i don't know how many people this has ever happened and maybe he's done it more than once but one of the greatest women's basketball players in Eureka College history, had Lauren Logston induct her. So Nicole Fisher at the time, now Nicole Sasada, um, that is a, that is an impression on a student athlete. Because usually the student athletes are having their coaches or, or something, but she had a faculty member. Maybe there's been more faculty members. I, I'm not for sure, Ken, and maybe he's done it for more than one person. I don't know, but I'll never forget that. I'll never forget in 14 years, like. Lauren Loxton is the one with this student athlete. So those are my stories. Thank you so much for sharing your father, your grandfather, your husband. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Lauren's uh, grandson. I attend here at Eureka College. I'm a junior. Um, so I just want to talk about what my grandfather has done for me over the past uh, two years since I've been attending uh, Eureka. Uh, so when I first came here, I was a person from out of the s several states away from Boise, Idaho. Didn't know many people. Um, I kind of came here. I was a young 17, uh, just turned 18 at the time in the summer. So I was a young college freshman. I didn't really know what was going on. I kind of slacked off a little bit. But the man that kept me going was my grandfather. He. Uh, he turned my academics around. He was always there for, for me, supporting me at athletic events and everything I needed him for. Uh, my, fret, my, first fret, my first year here at Eureka, I got a 1.5 GPA. And I thought, I, I thought things, were, things, were just not just, uh, things weren't going my way. I thought it was gonna be the end of my college. I thought I was gonna have to go back home. But he, uh, he was there for me. He helped me day in, day, night, uh, day, in, uh, day and out. Uh, he would 
because I have ADHD, he would help me read uh, my textbooks and describe them back to me as if he was teaching the class. And that hard, that was very heartwarming for me because it helped me turn around my academics and allowed me to attend this institution that he inspired me to go to. And it gave me a land of opportunity to be successful in the future. And I just want to give him thanks for everything he's done for me and my family. He's been a great leader for all of us. And I know he's in a better place. Hi, I'm Lori Bell, uh, the oldest daughter. And uh, we knew several things about my dad. He loved my mom, he loved our family, and he loved Eureka College. He was so passionate about it. and. He loved everything about it, and he could not wait to come back here. The year I was supposed to graduate from high school, he got an offer, and I said, oh, I'm not moving to Eureka. I'm going to stay in Macomb. And because of us, he stayed until he retired from Western and then could come back. And um, he, he just loves the place. And um, I went here a year and Eureka really has a magic to it. I only stayed a year because I wasn't ready to be away from home, but I made some lifelong friends here in that year I was here. And my daughter graduated here, and she loved it here too. So, you know, when this started, I could feel the trees, the wind, and I thought, my dad is here. And he's surrounding everybody with a big hug and encouragement and love and passion for the people here, the programs here. So thank you so much. You've been a major part of my dad's life, and it's made him so happy. And I know he's here with us, so thank you. Coach Wilding, can I give you a quick little advice? And this is too late, by the way. But if I would have known that my dad was coming onto the floor to talk to you about that stuff, <laughs> when I was in high school, he was always quiet except one little era of time when he started yelling at referees. <laughs> my mom sent him to the other side of the gym for a game or two to sit. She wouldn't sit with him. So if you would have had my mom in the crowd, she would have protected you from him. <laughs> Um, when I met uh, Lauren, I was uh, walking right up there to my room uh, at Deweese. Uh, he heard, overheard me talking with one of my fellow classmates about a paper that I was stressing about, and um, he pulled up in his in his vehicle and uh, told me, "Hey, uh, do you need some help?" and with the biggest smile on his face. Uh, and it, it was just, you know, he draw, draw me in with that smile and um, positivity. And, uh, you know, he sat there, I'd say probably an hour and a half, uh, helping me with, with my paper and explaining things out for me. And, uh, you know, like Mike said, you know, his caring nature and kindness to others. Uh, really has an effect on you uh he he asked me if i knew bryce and i told him that i was at that time i was uh, bryce's ra um and uh he just he told me to keep a watch over him um he said uh you know i could tell you're a you know kind kind man and uh you know a person that cares about others and you know that that really stuck with me um, he told me, <clears throat> sorry, uh, to watch over Bryce, um, and since then, Bryce, you're my brother, and I love you, and, um, I want you to know, no one fights alone, so. Mary, my entire Logsdon family, 
Our condolences. You all are part of this family and forever will be. I remember I was just sharing the first time that I met Dr. Loggs in, in the Surf Center. Uh, some of you all may not know, so I'm in my seventh year and my office when I first got here was the green room. So I was <laughs> leaving from the green room on my way up to a meeting. Professor Logsdon was leaving from the mailboxes. I remembered as vividly as if it were yesterday. And he, he yelled out, to, he called me my name, by name. I had only been here for a couple weeks. And he said, I know you. He said, you're famous. You know, <laughs> you're a legend. And he spent, I don't know, probably about 10 minutes talking about me and saying very little about himself. And I didn't know who he was at the time. He, we introduced ourselves. He, he told me his name. And it wasn't until later. And I think then it was uh, Dave Arnold and, and the CFO I was going to meet with, uh, Mark Pasteris. And I said, I just met this, this gentleman in, in the lobby. And, you know, he was fantastic. His, his aura, I, for a lot of people know, I like, I feel people's vibes. Uh, and I described his earlier as Chaplain Bruce as a rainbow. So every time I saw Professor Loggs, and even that very first day, I felt a rainbow. And uh, that was the case from there forward. And the, the ironic thing, of course, about that, that very first meeting is that he focused on, on things that he knew about me, but really he's the one who's the icon. He's the one who has this amazing legacy, right? He's the, the legend of Eureka. The magic that you're talking about, your dad brought that. He's the reason, in part, why there's such magic to this place, why there's such kindness and such love. Um, he, he embodied that. He's the very epitome of that for Eureka College. And so I too thank you for sharing him with us, uh, for, with me for so many years. Thank you for sharing your dad. Um, he is amazing and his, his legacy uh, will not ever go unforgotten because it is part of the DNA of this institution now. It is who we are, and it's all because of him. So Bryce, love you. We will take care of you. This is part of your community. We are part of your family, uh, and we, we will not, we, you won't fail. <laughs> we won't let you fail. And above all else, we know that Dr. Logsdon is gonna be here with that smile, with that fun loving. The only thing that I ever had um, an issue with Dr. Logsdon about was allowing Mike to sing. <laughs> that was the only thing, but I didn't have the heart to even say anything to him about it. I just would let it go, and I knew Mike was using him as a way to be allowed to sing, so I, I allowed it to go on. Um, but Dr. Logsdon, love you to death. Uh, thank goodness, no more singing with the imposters with Mike, um, but we will miss you tremendously, and we look forward to continuing to uplift you all in prayer, and we will continue to do that. Well, look around for a moment and raise your hand if you have a story you would love to tell about Lauren Logston. Just look around, raise your hand, see all the hands. Well, this is the Logston tree. Um, and this tree has taken root deeply, like he has in our hearts in this place and as the Logston legacy and our care for him have may this tree I rededicate today flourish and spread wide as his creativity and love of teaching has stretched across decades of students bringing such beauty to this place I can't end without quoting Ray Bradbury <laughs> he said and this sounds so much like Lauren to me. We are the miracle of force and matter making itself over into imagination and will. Incredible. The life force experimenting with forms. You for one, me for another. The universe has shouted itself alive. And we are one of the shouts. We are cups constantly and quietly being filled the trick is knowing how to tip ourselves over and let the beautiful stuff out. So just as the universe has shouted itself alive, may this tree live up to the legacy 
by Dr. Logston. Now we're going to have uh, the wreath placed and Amazing Grace sung by Mary Finch. So, Dr. Logston and my father and mother went to school here. Um, the same summer that Mary was pregnant with Beth, my mom was pregnant with me. And they always complained about how hot a summer it was, and we, that was, I felt like I was a little to blame for that, you know. But um, Lauren came to everything I did, and he was so supportive and so excited that I was returning home. So I'm going to sing Amazing Grace, or at least I'm really going to try. Um, this one hits close. I called my father, and cried on the phone. <laughs> Love Lauren. Loves you, Mary. So I'll see if I can get through this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. Thank you, Mary. I just have one final thing, one final reading. It's from my wife, Carolyn Roper Folks. Uh, she gave that to me today, knowing I was going to be here doing this. She's a hospice chaplain, and she knows deeply, deeply, um, the ministry of loss. And she gave me this with tears in her eyes. It's from the uh, Jewish book of common prayer, book of prayer for such occasions. When I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not in your mind. You can love me best by letting hands touch hands and letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all's left of me is love, give me away. Amen.
go in peace.